do this today. So Mary Ann, I tagged, I'm going to tag you in this so you can uh, watch this video. She was at a show and she saw this wreath and it was $75. I have paid that and more for a wreath, but for me to pay that much for a wreath, it has to be something special. So, um, I'm not sure I would have paid $75 for a book page wreath, but she's in another state and maybe that's what they go for. I don't know. So I'm going to show you all how to do this. So just go to a thrift store, pick up a couple old books. I would pick up two the very same size. Now this, these pages are eight inches. That's what size I'm using. Now you could make, if you went out and bought everything I'm using today, you could do this wreath for under $5. So I have a piece of foam board that I cut my circle from. And we have a lot of new followers and welcome. I really appreciate you joining. So I'm going to show this again because of the new followers. At Dollar Tree, you can pick up this. It's called a balloon sizing tool. I have used this so much for $1.25. This is like the best tool that I have picked up. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Mom. I have picked up uh, this and for $1.25. This has been the greatest thing because I use circles a lot. Now, this has nine different sizes in it, that two inches to 10 inch. So this is what they are, and this is what I use today. They, they are sold back in the department where you buy bagged balloons. And what balloon artists use is they need all their balloons the same size. So when they get them blown up, they put them in here, whatever size they're using, and they know all of their balloons are the same. So the dimensions they give you, and they're printed on each circle, is for the inside diameter. But what you're also getting is this outside diameter. So there's nine circles in here, but you're actually getting 18 because you're getting the inside and the outside. Now this is about an inch and a half. So I have used this so much that it has been the best dollar twenty-five I have ever spent. So sometimes I just go into Dollar Tree and roam around just to see what they got. And I found this one day. And this has been a great tool. So that's what I cut this circle with. Now this is the six inch circle. So this is actually seven and a half inches. Okay. Now I tried a couple different box cutters today. Now this is the best box cutter I found because paper will dull these blades really fast. And this one, you can just snip off the end and have a whole new blade. Because if your blade is not uh, sharp, this is what happens to your pages. They rip. And these we cannot use in, um, for our petals, but you can use them to cover the back of your foam core. You can use cardboard. You can also pick up circles that are uh, made for cakes. If you're a cake decorator or you do anything like that, um, you can use those circles also. The bigger your circle, the bigger your wreath. So I am making a smaller wreath just for myself. So this is, um, like I said, seven and a half inch. So on this one, I made a whole bunch of these petals. I don't know how many petals I'm going to need. But what I did was I covered the back. Now, if you followed me for any time at all, Every visual side that you can see on a project for me has to be finished, including this little lip, this little edge. It has to look, look finished, even though no one's going to pick up your wreath and turn it over and say, oh, you didn't get that one. For me, it has to be finished because I look at everything like it's going to be set, uh, sold because I sell everything I make. Even though this is for me, that's how I approach every single project. 
So I just used Mod Posh and put all these pieces of page on the back. And when I did that, I overlapped or overhung the pages just so I can clip them, like just fringe the edges, and we can fold these over. Now this side doesn't need to be finished because this is the side for our petals. This is the back of, of the wreath. So you can go to a thrift store. You might even have some old pages, uh, old books. If you ask around, people might even give you some. So I picked this book up. I picked a couple of them up. They were a quarter a piece. I like the old ones because they have patina. When you get your book, go like this to your page. If it's really, really old, when you go like this, your page, your edge is going to start to crack. You can't use that for the, for the petals. You can use it for this, but you can't use it for the petals because when we go to fold your page, if it's brittle, you're going to have an awful time getting your pages to hold up. So just go like this to your pages. And if it doesn't crack or doesn't start to tear, you know that's a good book to use. So I'm just taking a box cutter and I've been using this one so I'm just going to snip off this end. Now I found it easier to open the book like this and put the, the cover next to me. It prevents cuts. I found that out on the last wreath we made. So what you want to do now this is one that I've already done, cut a bunch of pages out of. But you want to take your knife at an angle. And what you're doing is cutting toward the spline here. At an angle and down. And really hard to cut these pages. Now when you do it, you're going to get a bunch of little pieces. So this is kind of messy. But you want to carefully pull out just a couple pages at a time and when they start becoming difficult to pull out like that one you know that you need to cut again and you just keep going with a whole bunch of pages now if you're doing a big wreath you might want to pick up two of the same size books uh, because I don't know how many petals we're going to use today so when you get all your pages out, well this cut pretty clean, but some of them, when I pulled them out, were not a straight edge. If they're not a straight edge, I used a ruler and a rotary cutter. Now this rotary cutter, whoops, I hit the camera again. This is from Dollar Tree. You can also pick up their green they're cutting mats for a rotary cutter at Dollar Tree. They're like eight and a half by 11, I think they are. So for 250, you have a rotary cutter and you can change these blades and you can pick these blades up like at Hobby Lobby, Walmart, you can get them at Amazon. So for $1.25, you got a rotary cutter. It's a little one, but I can tell you, I have paid $30 for a rotary cutter. So this one is nice and you can get your cutting mat because you have to have a cutting mat to use a rotary cutter and I just went along and I trimmed the edge of the paper straight so you have lots of little pieces of paper from this now I will tell you to get something and keep your little pieces in your uh, pieces that rip because we have a project next week that we need paper. So you just trim up your edge, make sure it's straight all the way around. And I've got a whole stack of them done. So you do that with a bunch of pages. And then you cover your back. And I just used Mod Posh, and you can get this also at Dollar Tree. You also can get clear glue. You can use that too at Dollar Tree. I am out of Mod Podge, so I am using this. And I'm just going to wrap. I'm just going to ride around the edge. And I'm just going to wrap the rest of these 
fringes that I cut into the paper around. That way I have a finished edge. And you just, it goes really quick, just push it over. I make sure I go from, from this side, wrap my thumb around, that way you get it really tight fit on that corner. Because you, you have to fringe this because of a, being round. If you just try to wrap it around, you're gonna get an uneven look. It's not gonna wrap very well. So this one is doubled. So I've, so Marianne could not figure out what the center of that wreath was made from. So that was my dilemma, coming up with a center to make this look like a sunflower. Now I can tell you, if you have a new book that you wanna use, you want your pages to be patina. So you can take some instant coffee, put it in a spray bottle with some water, make sure the coffee is really dissolved and spritz your pages and it will give them that patina. Also, another thing I thought you could do is put, this is in a separate spray bottle, a little bit of yellow paint in a spray bottle and lightly spritz. And I'm saying lightly spritz on the coffee and the paint because paper, you know, when it gets wet, it wrinkles really bad and it becomes brittle. So you might get torn pages if you put too much water on your page. But since it's a sunflower, you might want that yellow look. You can do that, but I would do it very lightly. And if you want it darker yellow, just do it multiple times. So now our pages. You want... I just saw the internet flip. <laughs> you want the writing on at least from halfway up on both pages. Now in the book, you always have front and back, you have a piece of cardstock that has nothing on it. You could have a dedication page just has a little bit of writing in it. You can't use that. You can't use the cardstock. It's too thick right now. And you might have an, a title page that just has the title of the book on it and nothing more. You can't use those pages. You want writing on both sides of your sheet to make it look right. And when I show you the petals I made, I'll show you why. But at least from halfway up on both sides, you want that print. So it took me a little while folding these to get, to get the knack of it. Now, if you want to get rid of the comments so that you can actually see me folding this, on some phones, in the lower left-hand corner, there is a, like a little arrow. Press that, the comments go away, or swipe from left to right, and the comments will go away. So I'm holding my page, and the writing is going up. Now, if you don't pay attention to the writing on your page, and you do one where the writing is upside down, it's going to stick out in your wreath really bad. You're going to see that, and everybody's eye is going to be drawn to that one page because it's upside down. So when you're doing this, make sure the writing is up. This is my right hand, and this is the right top corner. And I'm holding the bottom left corner. Okay? So I'm taking this... Let me move the glue the upper right corner and I'm just gently folding it about a quarter of a way down the page. And then I'm taking this corner, I'm gonna hold that there and I'm gonna wrap this. We are making a cone. And you just manipulate it until you've got this shape. Now you want this to be wider than the bottom. It doesn't matter if the bottom is tight, it's like you can see I'm sticking my finger in that, that's fine. You also don't want that corner to show. So you want this corner tucked in. The only corner on the upper part of your petal that you want showing is this one. So if this one is showing, just tuck it in and just fold your paper around a little bit more and you just, once you do this a couple of times, I went through these like 
really fast after I got the hang of it. But that is the shape you want. So this is the top of our petal, and this is the bottom. So we're more, we are more worried about, about a quarter of this way up more than we are the lower half of this. But this is the shape, and this is your petal. Now you can use double-sided tape. You can use white glue. You can use scotch tape to secure this. I'm using hot glue just for convenience and to get this moving. So there we go. That's what we want. I'm going to show you that again. Oh, I need to hold that just for a second. Because the other ones I did, I used scotch tape. So the writing is up. I've got my right corner, upper right corner, and I'm folding it over about a quarter of the page. I'm not putting a crease in that. And I'm bringing this left corner around. I'm kind of taking this left corner up toward the right top corner and just fold it into a comb. Like I said, once you do a couple of these, You'll go right through them because I did a whole bunch of these in no time at all. And there you go. And I'm not putting very much glue on there because it's paper. It'll hold. Okay. Let's set this aside. Let's set this aside. And let's get our cone. Now we need a center. Uh, have you looked at a sunflower? I know you all have. The center is kind of rounded and it's hard. So I came up with different ideas because she could not tell me what the center was made out of. She just said it was hard. So I figured, you know, you could take another little circle of cardboard Cover it in a brown fabric, stuff the fabric before you glue the fabric all the way around it, and then you could cover that with, you could do coffee beans, uh, rusty jingle bells, um, you could do pom-poms, uh, you could spray paint a bunch of uh, buttons brown. Um, I have a fringe here. This is... I picked this up at uh, Hobby Lobby one time. You could do this and do it in a circle. Now this is uh, extremely grunged fabric. Now we did a video on grunging not long ago. But this, after it was grunged, cinnamon was put on it and rubbed in with a brush. Then I took granules of instant coffee and sat it on this while it was still wet because it was wet like this and that's what the dark spots is you could cover a piece of cardboard with this stuff it now you can use fiber fill packing peanuts um paper shred you can wad up um paper and shove in there so you could use that this is a rug pad. You can also use shelf liner, and this is paintable. So you could spray paint this, and it would give you that texture. How about a printed fabric? Um, you can use brown paper bag. I've got all kinds of ideas. Just a plain brown fabric, and add your rusty bells or your um, buttons. Uh, coffee beans. You could take squares of brown paper. You know how you probably did this in elementary school? Wad it up like that. Put glue on it and stick that in your center just so it's sticking up. And you could use burlap. Those are my ideas. I have a unique idea. I have an old scale that I dry sunflower heads in. How about using a regular sunflower head? 
Now, I know you probably don't have one of these, but this is an idea. You could pick up sunflowers in grocery stores. Uh, there's sunflower farms. That's where I got all of these. And you can uh, use a regular sunflower head. The only thing, if you're going to do, the, do it this way, make sure after it's totally dry and hard, it's really hard and prickly, hit it over top of something because these things are full of seeds. And if you don't get all these seeds out, you're constantly going to see it looks like dirt on the floor under your wreath. So just hit that. I mean, really hit it hard to get all of that out. Now on these ones, you see there's still petals. I would pull all these petals off, but I would leave this that's around the head. I would leave that because this is hard. Now these petals, they're not. They're dry, but they're not hard at all. They just pull right off. So here's an idea for your center of your wreath. Now this would really make it look like a sunflower. But you see how it's rounded? So whatever you do, you want to make sure that this is rounded. I also thought you could take the bottom, like inch or two of a two liter bottle, cut it off, stuff that and wrap your fabric around that. And that way it would give you a base and also give you that this raised look. I do this every year. Some of those in there are probably five, six years old. So let's get back to our circle. I have a whole basket of these made. So we're going to start at the outside edge and work in. You need to figure out how big of a circle your center is going to be. So and you want to work toward that circle. Now, if you are like me, sometimes you get you get into a project and you forget. Um, you want to maybe mark your circle in the center. So where it is glued, where this uh, edge is that we wrapped around, is your back. This is your front. You want this opening to be your front of your petal. And when you're kind of uh, messing with this. This you want more in the center, this point, in the center of this opening. And that's how we're going to glue these on. And I'm just using hot glue. Now how far you put this out is how big your di diameter of your wreath is going to be. So I'm going in uh, about a couple of inches and gluing that down. So if I had taken my petal clear out here you see the difference in the size of your wreath so you have a few decisions to make not many so whatever you do your first one you want to do every one after that and you just keep going around in a circle Now the other one, the other uh, book page wreath we did, and I believe it was in January, we had to cut our pages to be, whoops, these ones are coming apart. Well, my tape did not hold, so there you go. Learn by my mistake. I really thought scotch tape would hold that. We had to make our pages more square because a book is rectangle and rectangle works with this. I can't believe all these came apart. So don't use scotch tape. <laughs> uh, Cause I thought that would work. It's paper for crying out loud. So see, I do things ahead of time so I can t show you this is what doesn't work and this is what works so when I'm doing this I'm turning the
the circle so that I can get this point more in the center of my petal. And I am slightly overlapping the bottom of the petals, just a little bit, just slightly overlapping that. See, I thought I was helping myself out by getting all these taped and done ahead of time. I guess the joke's on me, huh? So you see, this is getting filled in pretty quickly. Maybe I used old tape, I don't know. That could possibly be, because I've had that roll for a while. Now we, I'm thinking four or five rows of these before we put the center in. Now I, I still don't know what I'm doing for the center, so we're going to figure that one out as we get to it. I just might use the sunflower head. Now if you're going to make and sell these uh, using a sunflower head, unless you actually grow them yourself, will probably be too cost too costly to do it that way. And maybe that's why hers was $75, because she could not figure out what the center of that wreath was. So it could have been a sunflower head to make it cost that much. But you see how fast this is going once you get your petals made. Now, if you see something and you would say, I would like to know how that's made, you can send me a picture of it. But when you do, Send me the person's name that you saw it from so I can give them credit for the inspiration of this. Because if you are a crafter and you come up with an idea, you want to get credit for it. Just like at, a, at my job. If I do something that the last person doesn't didn't do, I want, I want credit for that. I want recognition. Because if you're a crafter and you sell... Your ideas are stolen so often, and people use it as their own. I know just since I've been doing these lives, I have seen quite a few of my things on other people's pages. Now, what's the coincidence of both of us coming up with the same idea? It's possible, but not very likely. Okay, first row done. So when you do your second row, you want to put your second row in between two petals on here. So you're, you're staggering your petals. I can't believe that tape did not hold. So much for all my prep work. But you know what they say about the best laid plans, right? Every one of these will come apart. So that roll of tape's going in the trash.
at least I just have to re-roll the shape. I don't have to totally get it because it is staying in shape. But now one thing I found out, and I did this with the other wreath, is after a while you lose your place. So you want to make sure that you are the same amount of petals high all the way around. Because after a while, you, you, you do lose your place. I lost my place on the other one. And when I hung it and started looking at it, I was one row short on the side. So I had to go back and add another row. A glue stick. Okay. If those of you that see me doing this, I had somebody ask me why I put a little bit of glue on my new glue stick. It just helps the glue stick to go through the gun a little bit better because um, if you use a glue gun and you put a new glue stick in, sometimes you have to stop and push the new one in. That's what that helps with. Just like a little time saver. Every single one of these have come apart. As you go around, if you see that the first layer isn't uh, glued down enough, stick a little bit of glue under that because you don't want to get all the way to the end of this and find your petals coming loose. Now those of you that follow me know I am not a wreath maker at all. Something like this I will tackle. Now, when it comes to the deco mesh, uh-uh, I did that one time, and oh, I, God bless you all that use deco mesh all the time, because I had a heck of a time with it. I have since learned what I did wrong, but still, no. I will pay for it. I have them falling out of my basket. So now each row, when you put it on, you can put it in further than the edge of your first row, the bottom of your first row. So I didn't need to go this like an inch in. I could have went that far in. So those are decisions you make as you're making yours. Mary Ann, I hope this is helpful to you. I will tag you in this. So if you are even making something yourself and you run into a glitch, send me a message and I'll try and help you work it out. I have been crafting my entire life and I have been doing it for the public for over 35 years. So 
I have come across all kinds of problems. So maybe I could help you out. And if I can't, I will find help you find a solution. Even if I have to make the item to figure it out. Because I am always up for crafting. Now, as you see, as we go around, you see how these are cupping up. That's what you want. Ooh, stuck my finger in the glue. That was not smart. So we are going to have to fold some more of these. Like I said, I did not know how many we were going to use. And I can get rid of this basket. Now do you see how it's how it's coming up? That's what you want it to do. And we're just going around and around and around. Each time I'm looking to make sure that this point is more in the center. So we're going to set this aside and roll some more of these. glue on my fingers and it's sticking to the page. When I first did this, I must have done the first petal five, five different times before I got it to look like her picture. So if you go to the thrift shop and buy your books, these were uh, 25 cents each. So I have a dollar and two books, which I didn't, not even using a whole book here. If you had to go buy your rotary cutter, cutter, the Dollar Tree is dollar twenty-five. The cutting mat's a dollar twenty-five. Your glue, which you probably, if you use these big glue sticks, maybe two. If you don't have cardboard or you don't have foam core, there's another dollar twenty-five. And then whatever you decide. To use for your center. I think coffee beans would be really cute. Which I don't have any. That's not the kind of coffee I buy. But even if you spray painted a bunch of buttons would look nice. So if you make this and you come up with something for your center uh, different than I've come up with, let me know. Send me a picture of whatever you make, whether it's something that we've made here live or not. Show me what you're making. Oops, that's upside down. Show me what you're making. I'd like to see. And it doesn't matter what it is. If it's crochet, if it's you're making ribbon flowers, it doesn't matter. Let us see what you're making. I think I'm going to have a show me Thursday. On Thursdays, everybody can post what you're making. I was, I've been thinking about that. So what do you think? Is that a good idea? Like I have a friend that does not craft. But she makes cupcakes. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful cupcakes. So she could post that if, if that, that's what you're doing. 
if that's your thing is baking, then show us. I'm not a baker. My daughter's a professional pastry chef. And she's got a daughter that loves to bake. One cooks and one bakes. So... Let's see if this is enough to finish this wreath. I had someone tell me that what they make isn't, isn't good enough for somebody to see. If it's good enough for you to, to do and good enough for you to put in your house, it's good enough to show us. So show us. So let's see, we have one, two, three, one, two. Okay, we need to start over here. This is where we left off. There is no right or wrong way to do any any kind of crafting. Everybody has their own ideas and their own way of doing things. You might look at this and say, well, if you would have done this or that, it would have been easier or better. Tell me. Show us. Because everybody has an imagination. Now, sometimes, and I know I was guilty of this, you don't want your kids to make a mess, so you won't let them do stuff, but that's their imagination developing, and I wish I would have known it earlier when my kids were little, because by us yelling at our kids and saying, don't make a mess, don't do that, don't do, you're squashing your child's imagination. So when my grandchildren started coming along to help with the mess that they made, because I had my, two of my granddaughters all the time, I would take a shower curtain and put it on the floor under the table they were working at so I could take it outside and shake it off. And sometimes when they were painting, I would take a garbage bag on the bottom side and cut out a place for their arm or their head and arms and let them go for it. So I know us as mothers, we don't like messes because it's us that cleans it up. But let your child make a mess. Even if you got to take them outside and let them make it outside. Now, the reason I said that you want to print on at least half of the page up just because when you fold this if you didn't have print on both sides you won't see the print here and you won't see the print here and it will just be a blank space and not look right and just need a couple more So, so, so far I have used one glue stick compared to what I already had in my gun here and what I've used so far of this new one. I would say about one glue stick. Let's see if that's enough. I might have to cut some more pages out. No, nope, I think that's going to be enough.
Now at this point, look at the inside of your wreath. If you have any pages that the whole bottom of your page is not um, glued down, glue them down at this point. So just shoot some extra glue in behind for that to catch on. So there is the wreath. Now we started out, this is now 20 inches wide from that small circle we started with. This is 20 inches wide now. Now had I moved the petals to start with in further to the center, it would be a lot smaller. So those are things to think about when you're going to make this. How big is the overall wreath that you want? So let's see what that looks like. To use this, I would have to add more petals in there. But isn't that nice in there? So I think I am going to add more petals and actually use one of these heads. This is one of the bigger ones I have. So when I get this completed, as always, I will post a finished picture of it hanging somewhere. I am going to add two more rows of petals so I can use that head. But what do you think of this so far? Now, when I am totally done with this, I am going to spray a clear coat over this like I did the other one, it will give a little bit of a sheen to the page, but also protect the page. But see, if you would go and spray a little tiny bit of yellow paint over this. So I hope you try this out. Now we have to put a hanger on the back. What I'm gonna use is a Chanel stem, a pipe cleaner as my hanger but what do you think do you like this and thank you Marianne for bringing it to our attention and giving me the opportunity to give you some ideas of how to make this I hope there, I hope you guys have a great day hi Curtis we, we're making a sunflower wreath out of book pages so you have to go back and watch the replay so I hope all of you have a great evening. Thank you for watching, and I will post the finished picture of this with the actual sunflower head in there because I think that will be adorable, but I need to add two more rows of the petals. Thanks, Mom. So I'm thinking to glue this down. I'm going to use an E6000. I'm not sure hot glue would hold it enough. Okay, everybody, you have a great evening. Thank you for watching. Welcome to all of our new members. I appreciate you joining, and I'll see you on Friday.